Hurghada is one of Egypt's premier resort areas. A 20 mile long, dense band of concrete on the fabled Red Sea. Unfortunately, all those resorts are generating an awful lot of trash, much of which ends up strewn across the desert. But one group of locals has suffered more than any other from the recent construction boom. They have herded goats and camels among the rocky sands of North Africa and the Middle East since time immemorial. Their name means desert nomad in Arabic. They are the Bedouin. Fiercely loyal to family and tribe, they live by a strong code of honor. Red Sea developers took the Bedouin's best land, and now they struggle to maintain their traditions and scratch a living out of the desert sands. They drink a heavily sweetened coffee made from fresh roasted beans and spiced with cardamom. Her name is Om Ahmed. She has no idea how old she is, only that she was born in the desert and wants to be buried beneath its rocky soil. Her three sons have taken jobs at nearby Red Sea resorts. One has even earned enough to buy a truck. He sends his two sons to spend weekends with their grandmother in the hopes that she will teach them the Bedouin way of life before it is completely lost. Um Ahmed is happy to put them both to work raising pigeons and herding goats. Though she may be more innovative than anyone gave her credit for. Recently, she cut an unusual deal to use her goats in an entirely new role, recycling garbage. Hepka delivers trash from the tourist resorts along the Red Sea, and the goats get down to business. They eat everything, from grass clippings to toilet paper. Nothing seems to faze them. Is there any corner of the world that Western garbage hasn't reached? While the goats are making short work of anything organic, the Bedouins scoop up all the recyclables. Even though it's over 105 degrees. It's a hard life, but in some ways, Um Ahmed is actually better off than she was before. The income from recycling allows her to buy all important water containers for her flock coolers for herself, a refrigerator, and clothes. Most importantly, her grandchildren are going to school. Though in the process, she has given up the safety of her nomadic life for an uncertain future. Every time there's unrest in faraway Cairo, Borgata's tourist industry comes to a crashing halt. Hotel occupancy can drop as low as 3%. Fewer tourists mean less trash and less income for the Bedouin, but also less damage to the reefs. Revolution may be bad for the economy, but it's good for the fish.